So yes, we'll be speaking about uh, scaling uh, with, with, when it's about physical stores, which is not exactly the same as you know full web uh, search and full web uh, stores. Uh, I will start by introducing myself and the whole team at Adeline because we are almost all here today at Berlin Buzzworld. So my name is Aline. I am uh, the CTO of this wonderful team. Um, well, we are experts in search engine technologies. Uh, we are consultants with uh, mostly Elasticsearch Solar, but whatever has search in it uh, is interesting for us. So um, yeah, we, we do search and we also are editors. Uh, sorry, I just lost. This is not my computer. You have a lot of things open, Omar. Uh, <laughs> so yes, we are also editors of a solution named uh, A2, which is a, a product uh, that we sell and that we license uh, specific for e-commerce and enter enterprise search. So we will speak about um, data when it's uh, about the physical world. Where then we'll talk more about deeply how it is uh, indexed. Um, then we will see the story of an e-commerce competitor that grows. Uh, speak about architecture and run and infrastructure at the end. If you have any question, uh, maybe it's better to keep them for the, the end of the talk. And I will, I'm a bit late at the beginning, so I will try to speed up. Uh, don't hesitate also to just interrupt me or tell me that I'm lacking time. Um, so let's go deep in the subject. We are in the physical world. So we are in stores, um, well, with people in it, uh, with their specificities. Uh, we are talking about you know, any physical store that is going online uh, that must do a digital transformation or wants to, but you know, with the recent events, everyone want, needed to, to get on the web some, some time. So uh, we are to really, um, it's a specific case because um, there you have a high diversity of um, what is in the shop, the prices, the, the stocks, uh, whatever is in the one online store will not be on the other one, so this is specific. Even if it's all an, under one brand, the, the, the grocery store and the, the retail, physical retail is very specific. Just to, to remember what are the expected features of e-commerce search, you probably uh, know a lot about this, but uh, maybe not. Uh, we expect search, of course. We need to find what we are looking for, find a product. Um, we are also searching for autocomplete. We need autocomplete. We need to access very quickly to what we are looking for. Um, we also uh, need to display a product card. We need to navigate through um, a tree, you know, through the, the, the different departments. Uh, when there is no product, when we search for it, we, are, uh, we need similar products, we need suggestions. Uh, if we write something badly, we need a, a did you mean thing. So we need a lot, a, a lot of features around search. Um, I will now explain you uh, what is happening, you know, when a, a shop needs to go online. A shop handles a lot of data, which is which can be very, very, um, you know, uh, data in any form. So you have files, maybe in folders in someone's computer. You have databases, you have the network, you have streams, you have different levels of maturity in, in any store. And also you can uh, find in such companies services. And the services um, can also all have their story, their data, their, their differences. Um, and when it's, about, um, when it's about search engine, you, you have to, to build the search engine above that. You have to deal with a, a lot of complexity coming with this data. But that's okay because a search engine can really help uh, uh, an online uh, a company that needs to go online in its digital transformation, which is good. You need that. Because um, when 
you, you have a lot of data that is very diverse and complex. Uh, you, you need to go very quick, and the search engine helps for it because it eats almost anything and provides this uh, as, as a unitary, um, very common API or platform, which is very easy to use. It masks all the complexity. And for me, search can put uh, all the digital transformation of a, a physical company one step ahead uh, and, and put it further and maybe advance a lot. Um, so now a bit of, of technical uh, things because we are in the so in the physical world. I say this, and uh, we need to handle the how you index the the, the different data we have uh, around the different uh, products, the products data, uh, in every form. So we need to to have indices, and we had to think about how you handle it. It's quite not straightforward. The first ID, of course, would be to have one index. And you put all your product referential in it. And then, as you know that you have specificities for offers, offers is like uh, we put the product in promotion, you put a price tag, uh, whatever. So you have different offers, several per product, and you have different stores. And one store makes offers for products. So you have a bit of a, a little relational data model in it. So you have to denormalize it, put it in an in index, and then you're done. So it's easy. You have, you have one index, you have a lot of products, a lot of offers, you have a very big index, and maybe it's a good solution. We'll see. Another idea on the right would be to have one index with a referential of products. So we keep only the, the, the ID, the, 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 you know, the tag of the product. And then all the offers would be into a separa separate index. So one index per store um, with the offers and the reference to the referential. Some, some of people maybe that work with search engines uh, technically would see that there is already something that we do not really like. Uh, so to summarize, something like this, um, it's good, it's compact, it's unitary. Uh, you have norm the like you denormalize normalize data, but you you can find your data mo model in it. Uh, you can stick to to the data you expect to have. Um, the cluster states would keep low. You only have one index. You have stuff very unitary. Um, but we we found that you lose a lot of search performance because you have to search through large model. So this is the first problem we had. You have uh, too much information retrieved. You you really get when you get to product, you 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 have a very big product card with all the offers and all that. You have to find in it what you need to display. Any small error in the product card would break. Uh, the whole thing. So if there is one product, one, one store putting a bad information, well, it will be replicated for everyone. Um, there are frequent updates also, because every time one store wants to change a price or do something, well, you will have to update the same document. And um, on the case two, you saw uh, there was a join. So joins on search, we don't really like that. So what we tried to do uh, was to put one index per store. Let's do that. We'll duplicate. So we du duplicate. We assume we duplicate common elements that are data that is common to everyone. So we have a lot, a lot, a lot of data which is duplicated. Uh, we assume that. Uh, we put one index per physical store so that we can keep all the products, all the offers, the configuration. You could, you can, we can also go very deep in the settings. The index settings are also one per physical store. So we really fine tune everything for the physical store. And with that, we have, well, the cluster states increases because 
we uh, have a lot of indices and uh, some updates, some stuff that happened, but the search performance is the best. And it's really easy to get the product we need. Each part keeps its independence. And when we are in the physical stores world, this is very important because you won't say at all the, you know, the, the store directors, the people uh, that, that, that manage the thing, uh, you will do the same that your colleague because they don't like that. So everyone needs to keep the independence. And you have fewer updates per index. You have a lot of updates, but they are, they are spread uh, uh, with the different indices. So now, let's see another part. We are, let's say we have solved the problem of the physical stores. We assume that we are um, responding to all the specificities. Uh, we are able to, um, well, uh, respond to the needs of every physical store. Everyone is happy. And of course, well, uh, what happened was really accelerated with the COVID-19 crisis for, uh, in our case, because now uh, everything accelerated. Uh, so the, um, you know, the, the, the digital transformation really went faster. Every company wanted it um, and they matured very quickly. So what happened? Well, it is good, but any company like that became to compete, um, began to compete with the, the real pure players, the, the e-commerce pure players, the big ones. You know, so there are other challenges that we'll see. So <laughs> this is the most beautiful schema of my presentation. I'm very proud of it. It's not mine. I should have credited it, but imagine, well, uh, we are in the situation of the, of the company um, when he, you know, you, 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 you bought the services of, of a wonderful architecture consultant, IT services, you know, IT, IT design consultant, architect. Um, and, you know, um, you are finally maturing, converging, you have a lot of application. Uh, you have architectures, you have services, you have, uh, you know, you are in the in the pure players world. You have achieved your digital transformation. You do like uh, plenary conferences, and uh, you know you can you can say you are one of them. Um, so the systems converge. This is good. This is good. Um, you know, you you are really thinking as a as, as a digital company. So this is good. You, um, you are in the full online world, and this is normal. What, what happened with the, the online you know, um, shopping is that, of course, when you are starting thinking like this, it opens a lot of doors in the mind. And uh, any, anyone that succeeded into putting the physical stores online can now pretend to be, uh, you know, directly competing with uh, Amazon or Rakuten or Alibaba, or whatever, in, in a country-wide or even city-wide, why not? So this is real challenge. And um, you can also uh, imagine that your search engine will now give, them f give data and products from the little store, so you still have it, but you, you, at the same time, if there is no, not what you need here, you can also search into a marketplace. You can search into, I don't know, a warehouse that provides speed delivery for non, you know, no food or stuff you need. So the, the idea would be that the search engine even masks more complexity. Um, and um, now, you know, you, you have a search which is really gets really powerful, like the Amazon search, but including physical world. Um, and also imagine that uh, with all what, 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 what we have into our hands now, we, we saw the keynote before, uh, add a bit of personal data here, personalization, uh, and it gets even more complex and more powerful. So the search engine is really, you know, very central. So yeah, we will have a search engine platform, one index per store, 
so a lot of I, I, I said I put a bit of ideas of how many products you would find so 20k products here a marketplace that would be like provided like one data stream coming from you know another service so you may have like one million two millions products in it unlimited a warehouse that contains products that can be delivered so 500,000 or, or 1 million, why not? Big indexes. And here you have another problem because this is not the same type of products. You have here, for example, tomatoes, potatoes, um, you know, kids stuff, um, whatever. And here we will find iPads, iPods, you know. Um, here we can find a, a garden table, for example. So very different products coming from any data source, and you need to put a search engine platform above it that would be still performant. So what we are thinking about would be to have, you know, to work before indexing, because we cannot add complexity to the search part, because we need to keep it, you know, speed, quick. So we imagine like a common schema. We say that we prepare our data before indexing it so that we have a bit of a structure and the goal behind that is to make a search through different indices, so multi-index searches. So once we have it, it has to work. And uh, we saw that we have big indices, we have a lot of differences. So we will uh, now see a bit of, you know, how, it's, how it can be built and how it can exist in an in a information system. So first, let's um, see a bit of the need in terms of infrastructure and what we need to address technically. First thing, we are in the mobile world. So we need that you know anyone shopping with a mobile phone will get tired very quickly. Uh, you can say it. I, I, uh, when it's above one second, you know you, you search and it doesn't work, you will move away and check your Facebook updates or TikTok. Um, so it needs to be very, very quick. And for the search part, we are challenged uh, today to be under half a second for a response. Um, then you have a lot of ingestion coming because, for example, for a marketplace, you have batches of products coming all the time, all day long, every minute, I don't know, every five minutes or stuff. And you also have updates, you have removal, products removal, you have moderation, because it's coming co to, from basically anywhere, and um, there are a lot, a lot of data processing, so you have to handle this ingestion. Um, you need to provide search, you don't know what for. I mean, you have to build a platform, make it, I, I put fully integrated with the main front end, you know, the website, the main website, the main application, but you have to be open so that anyone at any moment can develop something that would use the search in the whole services. So this is important to make an API to build it as, as a platform. Um, and to finish, well, you have to um, handle security, robustness, uh, isolation of data. We'll talk about this quickly. So I'm sorry, it's a bit small. I don't know if you can read. It's not very well written. But um, this is an example of um, you know the architecture, basic architecture, uh, using Elasticsearch. So this is what we do. So we have uh, Elasticsearch with the, its configuration, the different uh, mappings and settings for any index. You will find one index per store. You will find the marketplace and other indices. You also have a configuration index. And the configuration will contain also one config per index or per store or per specificity or per group. 
To edit the configuration, we have a tool, which we call the Business Console, with the best Business Console developer just in front of me. I had to mention him because he, he saved the presentation, so big up to the Business Console. Uh, so you can fine tune the configuration, you can uh, really apply boosts, uh, define the, the facets and all that. So it's very central and important to spend time on that because this is the entry point of all the business and all the, the people that know about the products. Um, and then you have the two parts with a very, very important one, which is before indexing. So there are data coming from anywhere. I didn't draw it, but you, you will find you know, the files, the stuff, the, anything here. Um, and before indexing, you have to do whatever it is that will speed up the search. So all the optimization, all the, you know, the, the any processing, dictionaries, um, you know, um, I don't know, any, anything that will help the index to be clean and to be searchable very quickly. So even if indexing takes a bit more time, it can be complicated because we see that, um, for example, in the marketplace, I told you, it has to keep f being fast. So there is a bit of a challenge here to be fast but performant. But the most important is that the search is very fast, always. So um, in the search part, you also have some, some operations that you can do, for example, collapsing results or stuff like this, but keep it very unitary and very fast. So there are these two parts, and the user with search, it comes here, easy. Um, as I said before, when we have a lot of indices, uh, the problem would be the cluster state because as you um, handle a lot of index information, the cluster size gets very big. So we needed to be multi-cluster, and we bought, we, we built, sorry, um, some clusters, where we put some store indices on any cluster, and we replicated the common ones through all the, cl the clusters. And we handle uh, the, the, the search through cl clusters ourselves. Basically, we built a handmade router that has a table. And when we ask for a store, it will route you to the right cluster. That's it. So it's a bit a, a, a big infrastructure, but it guarantees you, again, the, the quick search. To finish, uh, some things you have to think about when it's about running. Uh, the first important thing would be to monitor what is happening on the search engine. So we have to monitor what are the most frequent search terms, the filters, um, what happens, well, what are the searches that uh, gave zero results, um, what were the clicks on the second pages? Uh, where are also, wh when, you, when you search for product, where was it in the page? Uh, you also need well, no, um, histograms through the day. When, when, are, when, when is it most important? And the response times. It will learn you a lot about how it is used. And this is also a part of scalability. Because it's not only the, the, the fact that we have to grow a lot because it will always grow. We have to think that today we have thousands, we have two or three thousands of uh, physical store. Maybe we'll have ten thousand in in three years. You know, we don't know. Um, everything is growing, but also we know that the load is not the same throughout the day, throughout the the, the different days of the week. So we also have to know about that uh, in advance so that we be prepared when. It's needed. So this is just a quick view of what we are working on also. Um, this is um, well, uh, um, a proof of concept we did uh, with pushing scalability to, to its best part. So um, we, we built uh, our solutions. You see, for, um, if I get back to 
this one, uh, every, every part, most of this one, is not dependent on the data. It is, you know, algorithms and stuff you have to, to proceed. And this part can be seen as a microservice and we are able to scale. So the idea would be to have different uh, runners and we, we did this, uh, we, we tried to do this uh, using Kubernetes pods so that we can really scale up and down and see uh, how we can with a bit of separation of concerns, um, you know, be even thinner and more precise in the scalability. So I told a bit of, well, this was a quick, quick view of what we have to think. Uh, here's a checklist of what we just said. So first one, uh, it's very important to keep adapting to the place we are, the physical stores, because the specificities are very important and physical stores always exist and it's important to keep, to stick to them. Um, we can still use a schema or structure the data when uh, we include all the sets coming from the web. Um, the response time is non-negotiable. This is really important. It's also important that you, your indexing is precise and also um, your data keeps coherent, but response time is the most important. Um, it's important to monitor, to learn about what you monitored, and to um, prepare for scaling even more. Um, try to think microservices for what can be scaled, what is not dependent on you know, data. It can al always be important. And I didn't speak a lot of about security because to us a search engine is really in the back end. It's behind VPNs and stuff. So, well, uh, security is important, but we handle product data only, not personal data. So, well, um, the most important for us is when we talk about security is to guarantee data integrity, uh, error spreading, you know, or index corruptions. Uh, that can also come from the inside of the system. So that's it. Thank you all. I think um, I can breathe now because, you know, I just came downstairs from upstairs, so <laughs> it was a bit complicated, but thank you for your attention. Um, well, I'm open for any question you have. Um, have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you didn't mention uh, testing of, of search relevance, for example, or where does that fit in? Is this part of your search console? Like testing boosts or search configuration? configuration? Well, <clears throat> yeah. Just whether the, thing, the, the results are relevant to the query. Um, well, we have different parts that include testing. First of it is Code testing, so obviously you need to you know, check the integrity when you do algorithms, you have to test them. Uh, then you have also a big important part is the integration, integration testings, also when you are configuring very thinly with uh, the search console, which is here. Uh, yes, here you are doing very uh, important things that can be dangerous or can be corrupting also indices because you can also work on directly the elastic search settings and stuff. So we have um, only manual integration testing at the moment with a pre-production environment in integration environments. Um, but we, well, we, in the configuration part, it's difficult to automate integration testing. So we do manual Pre pre testing of you know we click we try such I, such results and and check it that's it yeah uh, thank you I have a question about the I have a question about the very important uh, response time that you mentioned so uh, 
One second, is there any granularity to that? So I mean, is it that everyone lives at one second or maybe like half of them and something like that? Uh, I don't see what you mean. So, like uh, one second, is it the time where everyone lives or like there are people already start to leave that at half a second or something like that? Do you oh, know? well, I don't have the exact, you know, um, review of what is one second and half a second. I don't know if like, for me, it's, it's more of a general thought, you know, when you're above a second, everyone leaves. Then about half a second is that uh, when you say one, one second, for me, it's the response time of the whole chain from the front end to, you know, getting the results displayed and all that. So in our team, you know, we are, um, well, in partnership with the front end team. And the whole thing must not be more than one second. Uh, but the search part must keep even thin thinner because you have all the display and stuff. So this is why we say for search, it must be half a second. Here's one more. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the talk. If I understood correctly, uh, you... All right, yeah. Uh, if I understand correctly, then you're querying uh, three indexes at the same time for each store. So the store index, the warehouse, and the... Yep. How do you combine the candidates from the different indices? Uh, combine and rank, so... Yeah, uh, by chance, we have some common, uh, you know, properties. Mainly the product identifier, the product card, you know, the main name, identifier, and description, more or less, is the same. So we are able to get that and then get that back from to the results. This is why I talked about the, the schema. You know, the common schema is important because you need to really have the, the well, com be able to combine information. Uh, so for the search terms, it will be search, you know, in, in any unitary specificity of a product in a specific index. But then when we retrieve the results, we will only be able to, to display a, a little part because what is, what is common between the, the three indices. There, th you need to have a common structure, a bit of a common structure between the, the indices to do that. Okay, next question here. Yeah, hi. Uh, it's nice to have separate indexes, but I wanted to understand how do you organize your code? Do you have separate code bases for each store? Or is it the same code base, but organized in a certain structure? Because there may be differences between the stores that are very specific to the store. So how do you manage that? Um, you have the same code base, really. We keep to, to keep the same one, but of course, um, the, the drawback of this is that you have a huge configuration part. So we, we are still with this um, currently, so with one code base, a big configuration part, and then you can fine tune specificities, and the configuration will be uh, different regarding the index you are in. So we can still do it with a, a one code base. I do not exclude that Someday, if really you have different, uh, you can say a marketplace is a different business from a grocery store. So it's not excluded that someday you would need to, you know, do plugins or stuff very specific. We also have a, a version where we use plugins and, you know, connectors specific for any, any stream also in, in so there are different possibilities. Currently, we try to keep one cut base, one product. Yeah, here. Hi. Um, thanks for the talk. It's very interesting. But um, I have a question similar to the one. Um, so you mentioned that you have uh, so many uh, indices, uh, one per uh, store, right? And um, how are you maintaining it? And when you scale, let's say you have uh, uh, thousands of um, stores as your customers, then um, how do you maintain your settings? Let's say you, you have a separate setting on, on mapping for each of the index, then how are you maintaining the Elasticsearch updates or um, let's say you have to change some mapping in an index how are you um, how will you uh, how are you maintaining this um, indices well it's a bit of the same answer it's more on with the configuration 
So you handle it with configuration. You have a very, uh, in, in the, the store indices, you still have a lot of similarities, you know, you have the same structure, you have, diff you know, not everything is different. The data is different. For the settings and mapping, I would say it's very similar. So you can assume that your, your code will be the same, that you will be able to, you know, to, to handle them on the code part the same way. You see, you apply the boost, but the values will be different, but the, the, the keys will be the same. I don't know if it answers your question. Maybe not exactly. We can talk about it later if you want. Okay, maybe last question. Hi, thank you so much for your talk, pretty interesting point of view. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, as you know, when you have a sales event, a Black Friday, there are a lot of events. Therefore, uh, are you auto-scaling the Elasticsearch? Uh, do you have any kind of recommendations or custom metric to, to, to do it? So, until now, for the Black Friday, the infrastructure was handling it. We we didn't we don't have we still don't have the, you know the the Kubernetes uh, thing, so you know it it worked with the multi cluster we we have currently the clusters we have are not full, they are you know they they can handle more, and uh, it worked it worked we have uh, you know five clusters currently with a lot of people uh, requesting and the load was maybe more in the indexing part, you know, all the corrections, all the, everything that was happening just before the Black Friday, all the ingestion part. Um, then the queries, as they are, they, they still keep very light, very unitary. Then, well, with, you know, only infrastructure, you can handle the load currently, and, you know, um, uh, with the, it was the, the router also handling everything, but, uh, well, it, um, uh, we, we could do it. With Elasticsearch for that, um, I would say it's a bit of the same, you know, this is the scaling, the seeing, see, see it also as a, um, a scalable thing. Um, I think that Elasticsearch is also available, for example, on Kubernetes, so you can, you know, scale and unscale for such events. So, yeah. Okay. So, well, thank you. Thank you. Uh,